One, two, three, four. Good morning, church. Would you all stand with us? As we come to worship this morning, here we go. We sing it out together, here we go. We worship the God who was. We worship the God who is. We worship the God who evermore will be. He opened the prison doors, he parted the raging sea, my God, he holds the victory. Yeah. There's joy in the house of the Lord, there's joy in the house of the Lord today, and we won't be quiet, we shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord, our God is sure. Shout out your prayer. 
the beggars, now we're royalty. We were the prisoners, now we're running free. We are forgiven, accepted, redeemed by His grace. Let the house of the Lord sing praise. Come on, church, sing that. We were the beggars, now we're royalty. We were the prisoners, now we're running free. We are forgiven, accepted, redeemed by His grace. Let the house of the Lord sing praise. We won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. We won't be quiet. Yeah, we shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. But we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Yeah. 
morning? Oh, there's nothing. Come on, church. none like you no one else can touch my heart like you do I can search for all eternity Lord and find that there is none like you sing that again search for all eternity, Lord, and find there is none like you. starts changing oh, I'm gonna worship till I mean every word cause the way I feel and the fear I'm facing doesn't change who you are or what you deserve I give you my worship you still deserve it. You're worthy. You're worthy. You're worthy of my song. I pour out your praises and blessing and breaking. You're worthy. You're worthy. You're worthy of my song. Oh 
stop singing your praise. I never stop singing your praise. And the blessing in the pain, you were worthy. It is the answer, no way. You are So much power when we worship your holy name. God, you're so worthy of our praise, Lord. God, and we will continue to worship you. Why? Because you are so worthy. Jesus, there's so much strength in your word, Jesus. Jesus, you're so worthy.
I'm the Lord your God. I have everything you need for every situation you face. Look to me, says the Lord, not to another. Look unto me, because I will meet your need. I will bless your life. I will lift you up. I will cause you to prosper and be in health as your soul prospers. So look to me, says the Lord. Call on me in time of trouble. Look to me in times of fear and see if I will not come and be near you and give you the power to overcome, says the Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. The Lord is speaking to somebody saying, look to him, not to others. Don't look to yourself. Look to him. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, look to the Lord. Amen. Come on, let's sing this together. Oh, come, let us adore him. Come on. we come to church should be a, a, a fresh understanding of who he is in our own personal lives and in the world around us and if we could understand more about Jesus our lives would be transformed and changed amen so as we join together in worship today I want us to say Lord help me know you Say that prayer and say, Lord, help me know you better. Amen. Amen. And I think that's going to be the key to this year's spiritual growth and success in all of our lives. Amen. All right, you can be seated. So good to have you all with us on this beautiful Sunday morning. And we appreciate all of you being here. And, and I know some of you have been fighting through the cough and the crud like I have for the last couple weeks, but the Lord is faithful, amen, brought us through, and uh, and we do appreciate y'all being here, and those of you watching online as well, we appreciate you all being with us as well, and we believe that God is going to speak to you and touch you just like he is us here, amen, so it is good to be here, we, we really do appreciate all especially those of you that might be here for the very first time. We are glad you're here. We really are. And uh, if that's you this morning, we have a gift for you. As you leave today out at the Welcome Center, you can pick it up on your way out. But we would ask you to take that information card in the seat in front of you, fill it out, drop it in the offering here in a few minutes just so we can have a record of your visit, and we would really appreciate that. And if you're here for the first time, we want you to feel welcome. So the way we welcome you here at Faith Life is we stand up, turn around, and greet four, five people. If you don't know those people, introduce yourself. Make a new friend as we join in worship this morning.
giving and our offering today. And uh, let me just say, uh, I know some people are wondering, we, we try to keep everybody informed as much as possible uh, about the tower that's being built. You know, we they were supposed to have started building that tower a few two or three months ago, but because of the hurricane and all those kinds of things, it's delayed, and there's some legal issues going on. It's not so much with our church, but it's it's with the tower company and and all those kinds of things. So we we did get an uh, email the other day that said it's moving through the process. So whatever that means, I'm not sure. You know, uh, but it, it's just going to happen when it's going to happen, just so you all know. And uh, I, I don't know exactly when they're going to start. I know they were delayed uh, because of some legal issues uh, that really have nothing to do with us as a church. It's, it's just big business and, and all those kinds of things. But I just want to keep you informed. It's coming. We just don't know when. Right, so so we're we're glad about that. We're looking forward to that. We believe that's uh, a blessing uh, that was given to us, um, and it came to us. We didn't go to it, and uh, the board and I talked about it and prayed about it for a long time last year. It felt like this was, uh, you know, a, a, a blessing from the Lord for our church. There will be some income every month from it. Not a lot, but some. So that's a good thing, all right? And and just keep, just wanted to, you know, keep you informed. Uh, it is moving forward, and we're looking forward to this year being a great year. Another thing is, you know, the, the uh, finishing up of all of the hurricane issues here. God only knows when that's going to take place, you know. Uh, but uh, some people are struggling for a long time getting their, know their insurance payments worked out and that's where we are and we have a uh, an adjuster that's taking care of all that but it just seems like it's taking too long for me but you know you know what I mean God gives us patience because uh, if he didn't you know it wouldn't be good so anyway uh, just just so you'll know I don't know when all of this is going to be repaired I'm Believing, hoping, praying that it's going to be soon. Uh, but, you know, it is what it is. Look at your neighbor and say, it is what it is. And, and but, but your giving enables us and empowers us. I just wanted to say, and you'll hear more about it, we're, we're doing some new things uh, this year, outreach into our community. We're uh, adopting a, um, a fire department. You know, our church is going to do some things for uh, the closest fire department. Jim's not too far from your house over there somewhere. And uh, we're going to just do what we can as a church to help them make their work easier. And we're going to do a few little things for them all during the year. And uh, we believe that it's a good uh, thing to do in our community to help our first responders and to show appreciation to them. We're going to do some habitat building this year like we've done for so many years, and we want to ask you to be involved. So listen, this year, uh, there, there's not passengers on this ship. There's only crew members. We're all going to work. Look at your neighbors say, we're all going to work. So... We're going to have a lot of opportunities to serve and to, to bless our community through the ministries of Faith Life, and we're going to need your help. And so we're looking forward to that. And we also need your giving as well because your giving continues to keep us moving forward, paying all the bills, taking care of all the expenses um, that have to do with running a church and, and those kinds of things. And your giving just enables us to do that. I want to say thank you for last year for your giving. We had a, 
great financial year last year, and we thank God for that. And it's only because of your generosity and your willingness to give uh, that we can say that. And, and so we're blessed uh, as a church, and we, we thank God for that. And, and we want to be able to do more and give more and serve more. And uh, so your participation and giving empowers us to do that. That's just the way it works. Amen. And so let's pray and ask the Lord as we give today that he would bless what we give and that he would use it uh, for his purpose and his glory. So let's pray. Father, we thank you this morning for this opportunity you have given to us to give. And I pray now, Lord, as we participate in what you are doing in the world today, the building of your kingdom in our generation. Lord, we own that. We'll, we take responsibility for that, and we participate, Lord, in giving of our, of our finances, our tithes, our offerings, but also our, our time, our talents, and our abilities and our gifts. We'll use those for your glory this year. We, we make that covenant together that we'll use these things for your glory this year in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen and amen. God bless you as you give today. family. My name is James Romulus and these are today's announcements. Don't forget on Tuesday nights we will be having the gathering prayer. Let's gather as we pray for our community, our church, and this nation. Man, don't forget January 26th at 7 p.m. there will be a Bible study. Ladies, are you looking for a ministry to build with one another as sisters in Christ? All ladies are invited to join the Secret Sisters ministry. If you would like more information about this ministry, make sure to pick up a form at the cafe. If you're looking for a ministry here at Faith Life to serve in, we need help cleaning the church. Join us twice a month on Saturday mornings to clean the church. At Faith Life Church, these are today's announcements. Make it a great day or not, the choice is yours. Sing that again. I love you, Lord.
of the Lord, I, I would just dread going to a church every Sunday where there's no life and there's no presence of the Lord, just dead, dried up religion, wouldn't you? I would just dread that. I would. I know a lot of people do it, but uh, I, I just would hate it, and uh, I just appreciate uh, that we anticipate God's presence being with us in every service because, yeah, because it's all about what God does, not what we do. Amen? And, uh, and so anyway, I want to share with you for a few minutes here. You know, we, we started off this year talking about the new year, the new you, because if you take the old year into the new year, it's just going to be the same old year as it was last year, right? And, uh, and so today, I, wanna, I want us to look at a verse of Scripture we've read a hundred times, but I, it jumped out at me um, because the Apostle Paul approached, learned to approach his life year after year from a new perspective or a new view, and that new perspective or a new view for the new year was what was God saying or what was God doing or what is God doing in my life right now? And so Paul, in Romans chapter 12, he talked about the power 
power of a transformed mind. The power of a transformed mind. Because if you go into the new year and um, the anticipation for this year is, what does God want to transform in my life? What does God want to transform in my mind, in my way of thinking, in, in my way of looking at the world around me that I'm in? in? In what does God want to transform in the way I see myself as a person or as a believer or as a part of God's plan in the world today? Because God is a God who builds things. And he builds us to be builders of things. God wants you to build something in your life. Maybe a fa God wants you to build a family. Maybe God wants you to help us build a church. God is a builder, and he wants all of us to be a part of that building process. Amen? <laughs> so, this year's a new year. But unless... We approach it from a different perspective. It will be just like last year and the year before and the year before. Have you, have you come to a place in your life to where it seems like this year is the same as last year and the same as the year before? Because um, we can spend a lot of time fighting the same battles that we should have won last year. We should have victory over some of those things that we continue to fight year after year. And so as we start out this year, 2023, the question is, can you see where you are most vulnerable to the work of the enemy? Because it's important that we understand our vulnerabilities, our weaknesses. Uh, can you pinpoint or recognize where you're being distracted by the enemy or attacked by the enemy? Because one is just as bad as the other. If, if, if the enemy can distract you from doing what God intends for you to do, it's just as bad as attacking you uh, with some, uh, you know, temptation or sickness or whatever. So, so can you pinpoint or recognize where the enemy is distracting you? Because he has the ability to get us out of focus on the most important thing, in our sp spiritual life, and that most important thing is Jesus. Christ is the most important thing in our life. And, and, and if you don't know yourself, you can spend this year fighting battles uh, that you could have or should have won last year or fighting battles that you should have avoided last year. Because sometimes the victory in the battle is learning what to avoid and stay away from, right? See, every year we walk with the Lord, we should be growing in the grace and the knowledge God wants to give us. And if we can listen to what God is telling us on the inside by the Spirit's voice, Instead of responding only to the externals all around us, if we could learn to live by the internal voice of the Spirit, I feel like preaching right here at night now, more than we respond to the externals around us, more than we overcome, you know, we can overcome those things from without by those things that are within because God has not given us a spirit of fear but of love, power, and a sound mind. God has given us the victory that always causes us to triumph. Amen? God has given us the power to be an overcomer 
in every circumstance of our life. Amen. Amen. You know, the Apostle Paul called it the eyes of our understanding. And Paul learned that he could live by an internal sight that is not based on the external things, but the internal things God is doing inside of us. If we could learn to be motivated and guided and directed from the inside, we could win every battle and have victory over every external circumstance that comes our way. Amen? So it's on the inside. Look at your neighbor say, it's on the inside. It's the Spirit of God on the inside. So let's look at this, uh, these three verses of Scripture in Romans chapter 12. Verses 1 through 3, let's all stand for the reading of God's Word. If you can, stand with us, and let's just read God's Word real nice and loud together. Ready? Here we go. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. For by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the faith God has distributed to each of you. Now, Paul is saying that because of the mercy of God, in other words, he's saying it's the mercy of God that should be the, the, the focus, the primary uh, you know, platform from which we live our life, God's mercy, God's mercy and grace. And so today I want to look at, and I believe Paul went through this transforming process in his mind to come to the place to where he could say that I can do all things through Christ to strengthen me. He, he, he said things like, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us and gave himself for us. But it was a process the Apostle Paul went through, and I think it's a process that all of us go through by the grace and mercy of God in our lives. Amen? So let's take our Bibles and let's pray the prayer together. Say, thank you, Lord, for your word. It's a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Prepare my heart and mind that I might receive your word, that it would take root in my heart and grow to produce the fruit you intended to produce in my life today. Amen. You can be seated. Thanks. Okay, let's just look at this. See, we can have a productive year when... We learn to live by God's mercy. Now, what I mean by that is God's mercy is a progressive revelation to each and every one of us. God never changes. Uh, he's always the same. But our understanding of him grows and develops over time and experience. Amen? Amen. Uh, it's not just the length of time. Uh, it's not about the seniority you have as a believer because you can be a believer in long, uh, a long time and not learn the power of God's mercy in your life. Can I get a good amen right there? That you can live a long time as a believer and, and not be have a transformed way of understanding God's mercy and grace in your life. It's not just the length of time, but it is our understanding of his mercy and grace 
through the different experiences that we have personally and individually. You see, the Bible is a progressive revelation uh, because what is written in Genesis is fully revealed in Revelation. In other words, what Genesis says, and, and, and in the Old Testament, there are types and shadows, and those types and shadows in the Old Testament point to God's mercy completely fulfilled in Jesus Christ. In other words, Jesus is the picture of God's mercy and grace in your life and for your life. And God wants to show you some things about who he is and who you are as you go along and you walk with him. As, and here's what Paul is saying. As we present ourselves to the Lord, and that's one of the keys in growing in the grace and the knowledge of the mercy of God, is that we present ourselves to the Lord, and we can keep from having to go through these unnecessary, unnecessary problems year after year of not presenting ourselves to God. In other words, if there are certain areas of your life that you continually struggle with, I think you probably haven't properly presented that to the Lord and said, Lord, I'm having a struggle here, and I'm tired of it, and I need your grace to give me the victory over this problem. Can I get a good amen? amen. See, there are certain places in life that we should avoid this year because they are not acceptable to the Lord. And, and it goes on to say, your reasonable surfeit, service to the Lord. And reasonable is, is not just that we are willing to fight, it's that God has called us to deal with certain things. There are certain battles that we will fight. But the reasonable ones are the ones that God chooses for your life, not the ones you choose. Does that make sense? In other words, that, you know, and, and, and let me say this. It's not just about our bodies or the externals. It is the willingness to present things that are in our mind. In other words, there are certain places that we should avoid because those places will cause our mind to, to go places that they shouldn't go, that are, that are not reasonable, that are not good, that are not helpful to us. Can I name a few of them? Twitter, certain movies, certain music. And you know, I've had people say to me, you know, Pastor, do you think uh, Christians should listen, only listen to Christian music? And you know what I say about that? My idea is there is some music that does nothing but take you away from God. And then there's other music that's kind of neutral. Of course, Christian music points us to the Lord, or, or it should. It, you know, it, it speaks of God and his goodness and grace in our lives. But, but there is music that will take you away from God, that, that there's nothing godly about it. I think that music should be avoided as Christians. Can I go to a good amen right there? There are certain movies that take you away from God. Those movies should be avoided. There's certain media that takes you away from God's will for your life. So avoid those. Stay away from those things. Some of these places can cause you to compare yourselves to other people. In other words, instead of comparing yourself 
to what God wants you to become. Uh, some of these media things that we deal with today causes us to compare ourselves to everybody else and, you know, I should have this and I'm not where I need to be or, or I'm not as far along as I need to be, you know, those kind of ideas. And, and rather than look to Jesus for your identity. In other words, we are to look to Jesus for who he wants us to be and what he wants us to do. Not, not comparing ourselves to everybody else, amen? And so you have to watch those places because some of those places make us feel like we're missing out or, or we're not as far along as we should be or, or we don't have as much money as we should have or, or those kinds of things. And, and some of these places can cause us to be judgmental and see everybody as our enemy if they don't think just like we do. And, and those places that cause that, we should learn to avoid those. And we should listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. And, and here's my idea. Put a Bible app on your phone this year. And put a, put a devotional or a prayer app on your phone this year. And let that be what you see most in your life. See, it, you know, I would suggest that, you know, you, you put a prayer app on your phone. We've asked you to pray three times a day for the first 21 days here in this new year. And, and I think if you do that, you won't have to post a picture of you praying on the Internet. Right? What it is, we'll see the results of your prayer after 21 days, right? You won't have to tell us you're praying. We will know you're praying because you'll be changed. You'll be different. You'll be better. You'll be more Christ-like. Amen? Can I get a good amen right there? Amen. <laughs> see, the Lord will help you where you're weak. And, and teach you where you're most vulnerable to the enemy. If it, and it's God's mercy that does that. It's not just you making a New Year's resolution to be a better person. It's the mercy of God. It's the, the mercy of God's like an internal GPS system for your life this year. It, it's like, you know, the GPS on your car, It I don't know about yours, but... The one in our car, it says, you know, there's, there's traffic up ahead. And there's a red line for maybe a few miles. There's a traffic jam or there's an accident or, or there's some problem up ahead for you. And, and, and if, you can, if you can let God's internal GPS system be the motivating factor in your life this year, it will help you avoid certain things. Sometimes, you know, you can get off of that road you're on that's going to be a traffic jam and go a different route so you can get to your destination a little bit quicker. Amen? Sometimes you can avoid it because there's no exits and you're stuck, right? And, and, and we have a lot of that here in Florida today, but... But Joseph, in the book of Genesis, you know, Joseph went through a, a lot of terrible things in his life. He went through a lot of trouble in his family, and, and he was wrongly accused by Potiphar's wife and all those kinds of things. But, but Joseph had a GPS on the inside of him called the power of the Holy Spirit, and he told, you know, the, the king, there's going to be seven years of famine. And Joseph had um, developed such a reputation for understanding things that the king listened to him. And so the king said, well, let's store up, you know, grain and food and water for those seven years of famine and and they did, and they saved their nation. And it's because Joseph lived by this 
internal GPS system in his life. And, and Joseph learned to live from that internal voice of the Lord through all of his troubles and all of his trials. So this, so this internal voice is developed through, through the difficulties and the trials that he faced that were according to God's will in his life. Does that make sense? See, it just doesn't happen overnight. It, it takes time to learn how to listen to the voice of the Spirit of God in your life. And, and so, wouldn't it be great if we had faith that, that going into this new year, we're not going into it alone, but we have someone with us called the Holy Spirit, and, and that's why when Jesus went to heaven, he sent the Holy Spirit to the church, to those who believe in him, to guide them and direct them and to teach them to, to be victorious and to overcome every circumstance they faced in life. Amen? And so it's the Holy Spirit inside of us that is the spirit of righteousness. Notice Paul said, don't think of yourself more highly than you ought to. I thought that was kind of strange. Why would Paul say that when he talked about having a transformed mind? And, and he said, what I hear him say is, one of our greatest problems is we think too highly of ourselves. In other words, we put more of of you know, the, the responsibility on ourselves rather than dependence on God in the middle of our trouble. I don't know about you, but this last year I've been through some things that overwhelmed me that I knew I couldn't handle just on my own. I didn't have the internal strength or power to figure it all out and understand it all. And I just had to say, Lord, I don't get this. I don't like this. You got to help me get through this. And I, I felt, yeah, I felt a strength rise up on the inside of me that empowered me to make it through. You understand what I mean? And so Paul said, you know, don't think of yourself too highly. Depend on the mercy and the grace of God more and more. In other words, make that uh, uh, one of the most important factors in your life this year. He's the spirit of truth. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. What he tells you will be truthful. He will help you understand what is true and what is not true. He's the spirit of wisdom and understanding. In other words, we can lean on the wisdom of God in every situation in life. We can lean on his understanding, the Bible says. And so when he tells us don't go there, don't think that, don't say that, don't text that, don't send that email, you know, don't watch that, then don't do it. This year, give God the opportunity to show you what is acceptable to him. Because we can avoid a lot of problems in our life if we just say, Lord, I want to do what's acceptable to you. Our problem is we want to do what's acceptable to us. Oh, can I get a good amen right there? Amen. The one who created you knows how to teach you and to counsel you in the right way to give you the victory in your life. Secondly, the Bible, Paul says, that we have a transformed mind. Too often we allow ourselves uh, to live with a discouraged mind. And, and we get ourselves all discouraged and, and we... You know, we think that we can come to church and sing a couple worship songs 
and get ourselves out of being discouraged. When in reality, we have allowed ourselves to get into situations or allow the devil to distract us that causes us to be discouraged because discouragement is what's in your mind. And, and what I have found, because I've been in the church a long time, and I know how we do, and you know we, you know we try to develop cliches like new year, new you. And you know, that sounds kind of nice if you're a preacher, but if you're sitting there thinking, there ain't nothing new in my life. You know, new year, same old problems. You know, that's kind of the way we look at it. But see, you know, our mind has to become transformed. And you have to do things differently for a long time to change the way you think. Uh, we can learn what really matters this year instead of spending so much time on what doesn't matter. We get distracted, and we, we deal with things that don't really matter to us and, and doesn't really lend itself to our spiritual growth uh, and understanding. And, and, you know, you can't allow the devil to get you distracted this year like he did last year. You, your joy can afford being distracted. In other words, if you want to have the joy of the Lord, you got to focus on the Lord. You got to focus on His Word. You got to spend time in prayer. You got to spend time in worship. You know, we sing, This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battle. But one of the best ways to fight a battle is letting God tell you what to avoid. And only fight the battles he wants you to fight. We get so involved in so many battles that God is not a part of. Battles we create. And, and so we got to allow God this year to show us what to avoid and what to prioritize in our life. And then lastly, we have to learn to live by faith. And here's what I want you to understand. God has given each and every one of us the faith to fight every battle he wants us in. But so, sometimes we get into battles he don't want us to be in. And one of the greatest lessons is, you know, the battle in our mind a lot of times comes from what used to be or who we used to be. And we try to compensate, and we try to, uh, you know, uh, prove to people that, that, you know, we're not that person anymore. But in reality, we have become a new creation in Christ. The old has passed away, and everything has become new. So God wants us to enter into the new things he has for us. Amen? You know, the things of the past are already forgiven. And you don't have to waste your time on trying to, on trying to you know, make out or make up for the things you did in the past. Because those things are already forgiven. Isn't that a wonderful thing? That the mercy of God... Uh, gives us the ability to, to leave the old and enter into the new, be forgiven of the past, but given us a new future. Isn't that wonderful to know that? And if we could learn to live from that perspective by the mercy of God's grace, of forgiveness from our past, that the old creation is gone, the new creation has come, and God will tell us, how to fight our battles and win them. And if you're always fighting that old battle of what was and what could have been, should have been, might have been, you know, blaming, you know, your problems on things of the past or, or people of the past, 
let those things go. Shake them off, like the prophet Taylor Swift says, and let them go, right? Right? Just shake it off. Look at your neighbor and say, shake it off. But we spend so much time on what could have been, would have been, or should have been, but it's God's mercy that has redeemed us from those things. Man, hey, he has set us free from those things. He, he has given us a new life in him. Amen. Amen. And don't spend your time on those things. Spend your time on the new things that God has for you. Amen. It's good preaching right there. The, and, and if you live by that internal voice, you, 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 have, you have the power to, to win battles uh, that, are, that are all around you that will come, uh, you know, to your life. You know, Elisha, he had inside information, and, and the Bible says, and that he, that he would, uh, in 2 Kings, he would tell the king of Israel, now listen, the king of Syria is going to send an army over here, and he's going to attack us. So the king of Israel would put an army there before they got there, and they would defeat them. This happened time and time and time again. Finally, the king of Syria said, how is this happening? How are we losing all these battles? And somebody said to him, there's a guy over there named Elisha who's got some inside information. And he knows what's going to happen before we send the troops there. And it says in 2 Kings 6.13, go find where he is when he found out who he was so I can send men and capture him. And the report came back, he is in Dothan. The point about this is that there was a battle that was coming that Elisha would have to be involved in. But Elisha had inside information that gave him the power to win those battles every time and avoid some things but he would have to fight a battle. Here's my point today. This year, you're going to have some battles. You're going to have some, some trials and some situations. But it's probably because the enemy knows you got inside information. You might be ready to break a generational curse in your family. You might be ready to bring somebody to Jesus that was one of the devil's chief officers. You, 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 might, you might be ready to, to overcome and, and to bring blessing to somebody's life that never believed in God. And the enemy wants to attack you because of it. I'm not saying you're not going to have a battle. You're going to have some battles. But they're going to be strategic battles that God wants you to fight. So don't waste your time on dumb battles. Amen? Fight the ones that God wants you to fight because He gives you the faith in those to win them. He has given to every man the measure of faith it takes for you to overcome and be victorious in those battles. Is that good preaching right there? So I want you to stand this morning. We're going to close in prayer. God has some battles that he wants you to fight because they're going to be necessary for you to prove and to grow in the grace and the knowledge of the mercy of God in your life. God's mercy will carry you through. God's grace will give you the strength. Because, you know, the, when, when Paul prayed, Lord, take this thorn 
out of me. Three times he prayed, Lord, take this thorn out of my life. And it's debated what that is. But the Holy Spirit spoke to him and said, my grace is sufficient for you. So it doesn't matter if you've got a thorn, if you've got the grace to back it up. It doesn't matter if you got a problem, if you got the faith to meet that battle head on, and you can win. And so today, as we begin this new year, you know, we want you to pray because prayer brings you to a place to where God can do a transforming work in your life and in your mind. As we read God's Word, the Bible says that the Word is a probing instrument. It, 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 it is, a, it is a, a guide. It is a direction. It is a foundation that we can build our lives on. And it, God's Word will, will take us in the right direction that leads to victory and leads ultimately to, Jesus, to meeting Jesus one of these days. Amen? And so we, I want you this year to let, you, let God transform your mind, transform your life. Because as he does, there'll be more and more victories won. There'll be greater faith in your life than you've ever had. And you might go into some battles you don't choose, but God will choose your battles and he'll give you the victory through every one of them. Amen. And so this morning, I want us to pray together, and I want to ask you, I'm going to get up close and personal here today, do you know what areas of your life that you're susceptible to distraction? What are those things in your life that the enemy can use to distract you from what God wants for your life? To distract you from what is pleasing and acceptable to the Lord. Because if we can live with a desire to please and be acceptable to the Lord, it'll change everything. It'll change the way we do things. It'll change the way we say things. It'll change our behaviors. It'll change the way we think. If we do our best, to live a life that's pleasing and acceptable to the Lord. We get in trouble when we get involved in things that are unacceptable to God. Because what happens to us is we get ourselves all jammed up in certain situations. And you know, God, by His mercy and grace, He'll come and help you. It's not like He's going to leave you out there if you do something, you know, stupid. He'll still rescue you, right? But it's a whole lot easier if you don't have to live with all those distractions. And we can because we have God's Word and God's Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us and direct us and bless us. Amen? And so this year, I'm going to ask God to help me know more about what is what I'm vulnerable to? What areas in my life am I vulnerable to distraction? Am I vulnerable in temptation? Am I vulnerable, you know, what things are causing me to think in the wrong ways or act in the wrong ways? And by God's grace, give me the victory over those things. Amen. And so we're going to pray this morning. If the prayer team would come, maybe you've fought that same old battle over and over and over again. Maybe this year you're afraid is going to be just like last year and the year before and the year before. God wants to break that cycle in your life. God wants to give you that internal voice of the Spirit that will lead you out of those old addictive cycles, those old patterns of thought that keep us from becoming all that God wants us to be, amen? 
And so we're going to pray. And if you need somebody to pray with you about that in your life, we'd ask you to come. And we're just going to agree together with you in prayer. But the most important thing is if you don't know Jesus, the first step is to accept him into your heart and life as Savior and Lord. That's the first step is begin to follow Jesus, and he'll lead you to victory. Amen? And you do that by just accepting him into your heart, repenting of your sins, and asking forgiveness. And God will, will help you be a follower of Jesus. Amen? So let's sing together, and then we're going to pray. All right? This is, how, this is how I fight my battles. 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 Yeah. Looks like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. You may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. You may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. you free. Amen. God will do that for you. You might not know how to do it on your own, but we can help you do that. Amen. So here's what I want to do. I want us to pray. I just feel like this morning that one of the greatest distractions is fear in our life. Fear can cripple you from, from moving forward with God. And it's the mercy and grace of God that will deliver you from fear. Paul said, God has not, or Timothy, we have not been given the spirit of fear, but of love and power and a sound mind. God wants to give you that spirit of power over your fears, over those things that, that have haunted you for maybe your whole life. God wants to give you the victory over that. Amen. And so I want us to pray together. If you need prayer, come forward. But let's just pray together. If you would, just take somebody by the hand if that's okay with you. And let's just pray for one another as we close today. As the body of Christ, as, as the church of Jesus Christ, let's just pray for one another. Father, we, we come together today. And we pray, Lord, that you would speak to our hearts. Lord, that you would begin the process of transforming our minds, renewing our minds, restoring our minds, making our minds into what you want it to be. I pray, Lord, that you would break the power of fear in some people's lives. Lord, I pray that you would break the power of the past sever those old things that cause us to do what we do today that are not pleasing to you, Lord, that are not acceptable in your sight. And Lord, I pray that you would give us a new mind to live by faith that every battle through every trial that will give us the victory over every external circumstance and situation that we face in life and your name will be glorified through it all and Christ will be seen in us as we live out our Christian lives. Now, Lord, bless us together and cause us to live a new life this year in 2023 as we learn to follow you and to serve you in the way you want us to go, in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen, amen. All right, God bless you. Thank you for coming. We appreciate you being here. This is going to be a great year. I believe it. I feel it. I, I sense it in my heart. This is going to be a great year this year. Amen, amen. God bless you all. You're dismissed. Don't forget Tuesday night, 7 o'clock, prayer gathering here. Come and Pray with us 
and believe God with us. All right? God bless you all and thank you. Amen.